All right, I have returned. An interesting choice by Sensei and I just going for the up tilt when uh, the beast landed in front of him, but I guess he was sure that the, uh, the forward tilt would kill there. Yeah. And again, we see uh, we see Sensei C4 use just pretty effective overall. He's putting them in spots where he thinks that they're going to land, or he thinks that they're going to be soon. And he's fully taking advantage of, um, of kind of not optimal approaches. You can see, like, Sensei swinging a lot more overall now that he knows, now that he has the stock advantage, and a really good use of the grenade. Uh, Beast was in a prime position to take out uh, Sensei at that exact moment, and he had the grenade in hand and just stopped it, dead in his tracks. All right, we have a double suicide or a double a double kill. <laughs> it's not that often you see the grenade like blow up like that. And you see, like Sensei has gone completely into tactics where he's like, "Yeah, I can afford to take a few hits, but you kind of can. If I use the uh, if I use the grenades as a way to counter." And I take a few hits, you're gonna be at a kill percent once I'm finally uh, on my last stock. And a crazy use of the side B. I'm not really sure why. Um, I'm not really sure why Flare Blitz didn't end up just uh, canceling it out temporarily into a small explosion, but that was a very good use of side B coming from a uh, beast. Alright, so we're gonna have. Sensei carrying the taking the first match pretty handily overall. With the Sensei Band Town and City and Yoshi's. And we're going back to PS2, which is totally a beast thing to do. Ooh, great use to be up. Oh my goodness, just barely. Since he's just barely avoiding that uh, that F smash from B's. That was a wonderful tech chase coming out from him, but now he's on the ropes. He's has his back to the uh, the edge. You can kind of see that neither of these players are really trying to swing unless they're sure that they're going to get the hit. At least not in neutral. Uh, when they have their advantages, they both do a really good job of busting it. Yeah, no, nice up third, up tilt. So really like the way that um, Sensei's been parrying the grenades. And he's like, yeah, I don't want to suffer deal. I don't want to suffer any kind of shield damage. I just want to cook the grenade and hope that you come close enough where I can actually hit you with it. And then that way, uh, if I keep parrying these, I'm going to be pretty good. Yep, Sensei was anticipating a full-on runaway. Uh, Beast didn't give it to him and ended up just smacking him in the face with the tail. Actually, extremely well spaced, considering that he was crouching into the ground at that moment. A good use of bear coming from Beast, completely turning the match around. A uh, snake does have a very slow recovery, and especially at a, uh, especially at low percent, if you can keep knocking him away with weak hits, and eventually he's in the blast zone, and then get one strong hit, you will get the kill. Invincibility frames from the uh, Pokemon Switch coming in clutch, and again we have Sensei off the stage, managing to get back on. Easy Charizard's bear uh, has not much... Ooh, my goodness. This might be risky for Sensei. And getting hit with the tip uh, that was probably techable 
Uh, the main issue most likely came from the fact that he got hit with the tip, and if he had gotten hit with the base, it would have been completely different timing for him to detect it. Uh, he probably just didn't react in time. Uh, of course, the base of the uh, of the back air does have less knockback than the tip, uh, which can really uh, can really mess up tags if you're not uh, if you're not paying attention to where you are or if you're just not ready for it. Because that back air tip is super strong, sends you go down super quick. Ready? We have a super competitive game three coming in. It looks like we're going back to PS2. Or, or let's see. Oh no, we're going to Smashville. All right, good, good counter pick from Sunset. Right, we see um, we see Sensei kind of going with his game plan. He's getting ready to he's setting up C4. He's setting up grenades. He's looking for an opportunity to, to get some kind of advantage on um, on Sensei. Oh my goodness! Just barely destroying the cipher, but uh, Sensei managing to air dodge back up and getting hit with a back air, full strength back air at the ledge, killing an 80. Uh, that's one of the main downsides of picking the stage against Charizard is that Charizard does have a really good way to kill you super, super early. So if you expect uh, to be killing uh, a lot earlier than usual just because this is natural and you're playing Snake, you gotta beware, Charizard. He has two really good pursuit moves off stage in the form of back air and forward air. Which both make it so they can actually go after Snake super deep when he needs to and you can also get the super early stocks. Sensei down on his last stock, uh, he's holding a pretty solid lead overall. Very good use of grenade to cover all of the ledge options. Uh, Beast could have waited a quarter of a second longer and it might have not have worked. <laughs> Alright, sorry about that. Oh. Oh my goodness, a oh, great use of C4 from Sensei there. Uh, Beast either forgetting that the C4 was there on the platform or just uh, being caught at the wrong time. And the grenade covering so well for Sensei. Sensei managing to bring this back and it's... Oh my goodness, a 55% back air. Tipper. Of course, it's Char yes, if you're using that with Charizard, it's going to kill, man. Really good awareness from Beast. Uh, the number of times that he's killed with back air super duper early uh, might be making Sensei kind of regret this counter pick. Very well done on Beast's part to take advantage of that. Alright, so next up we're gonna have uh, Zack versus Nintunest.